Today I'm going to be reviewing the Terramaster D8 Hybrid, a new USB DAS from Terramaster that features four 3.5 inch hard drive bays, as well as four M.2 NVMe drive bays. And I'm going to be taking a look at the performance, power consumption, thermals, noise, and going over some of my thoughts after using this unit for a little bit. A quick disclaimer before I get started is that this unit was provided to me by Terramaster for the purpose of this review, but no money's changed hands and they haven't seen this video before it's gone public on YouTube. Also, this unit is advertised to be used with PCs, Macs, and other computers, as well as some functionality with existing Terramaster units. In this video, I only used it with PCs, Macs, and Linux systems, and haven't looked at Terramaster units, so I'm not going to comment on how well it integrates with existing Terramaster products. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this unit we have here. The first thing I want to mention is this is a DAS unit, not a NAS. It's in a very similar form factor to the NAS units, but since it's a direct attached storage, it connects to a single PC using USB with essentially no configuration required, whereas a NAS unit would have a network connection and have a full management page and a browser and different functionality. There are both pros and cons of NAS and DAS based storage, but USB is convenient because you can plug it into any single system at 10 gigabit, which is likely faster than a NAS of this price point would be able to connect at. But it also has some disadvantages like not being able to run any individual apps on it, for example. So there's definitely pros and cons of using a NAS versus a DAS. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the physical hardware we have here. This hardware is very similar to all the existing Terramaster NAS units, using a very similar design and uses the same nice hard drive bays on the front of the unit. Also on the front of the unit is a power LED and four indicator LEDs for the hard drive bays, though there's no indicator LEDs for the M.2 slots that I can see. There was a few ventilation slots on the side and moving over to the back of the unit, we can see the large fan that ran basically silent in all of my testing for cooling all the drives, as well as a 12 volt, seven and a half amp input for power and the USB-C connection to connect to your system. In the box, this unit also came with about a one meter C to C cable to connect it. There's also a little dial for configuring RAID of two of the hard drive bays, as well as a little inset button to apply the RAID configuration and wipe all the data on those two drives. Now the way the RAID works on this unit is a little bit interesting because it's only on two of the hard drive bays. It gives you all the standard configurations with individual drives, JBOD, RAID 0, and RAID 1, but only two drive bays is a bit weird for RAID and makes me question where that would be useful. My only thoughts of where this made sense is when I continued to take it apart and it kind of made sense of why they'd implemented it that way looking eternally, but as a user, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's actually take a look at this unit internally. You can take out two screws on the side of the unit and the side pops off, giving access to the four NVMe M.2 SSD drive base. I also took this whole board out, which doesn't have any user replaceable parts internally, but it gives me a sense of what's going on with all the data routing and chips on this board. And from what I can see, the USB signal comes into this unit, goes into a four port USB hub. Three of those connections go to different drives, and one of those connections goes to another four port USB hub, which gives four more connections for a total of seven usable USB connections. Six of those go to individual drives, in this case, the four M.2 drives and two of the hard drives. And the seventh connection goes to one of that USB RAID chip that powers two of the different hard drives here and allows for the RAID configuration. Guess it makes sense they did it all over USB because it allows for existing chipsets to be used, but leaves this weird, what do I do with RAID on only two drives? Taking a look at how this drive presents itself to the system shows exactly what I saw physically, which is multiple USB hubs and lots of USB to SATA or USB to NVMe adapters. I did want to test what type of operations are allowed on these adapters. Luckily, full smart data is supported, so I can see the temperatures, health, and all the other information about these drives. But unfortunately, no trim commands seem to work on any of my drives or on multiple different OSs, which is unfortunate because a lot of SSDs rely on trim commands to get the most possible performance out of them and allow for the large write cache size. And eh, it's pretty unfortunate to see I'm not able to use that on either the M.2 bays or the SATA slots in this system. Temperature wise, this system ran pretty good for the hard drive. So in the mid 30 degrees when I had a relatively normal about 20 degrees Celsius room. On the other hand, the M.2 NVMe drives ran pretty toasty under sustained load. There was no heat sink provided for these drives, although there is a little bit of air through through the perforated side panel on this system. 
I would have loved to see a little bit more air move on these drives, but you can also relatively easily get a heat sink to help deal with those temperatures. And it never got into a critical or warning range with those temperatures. Power consumption wise, I ran quite a few different power tests under different loads, workloads, and number of drives on this system. And I put a table together on the screen here. You can take a read of and try to understand how the power consumption is. It's a little bit lower than a moderate performance NAS unit with the same amount of drives in it, which seems about right because this doesn't really have any sort of internal computer. These USB to SATA chips and USB hubs definitely use a little bit of power it seems like, and I would have loved to see a better idle state. You can completely turn this unit off to save power, but if you unplug the USB cable, it doesn't do that automatically, which can be a bit annoying if you plug it into a laptop, for example, and then unplug it and it chews about six and a half watts all the time with drives in it. Not optimal, but not a huge amount of power in the scheme of things. I also did a little bit of testing with the built-in RAID configuration by putting two four terabyte WD RED drives in the RAID enabled bays and just trying out the different modes. The one thing I did like is that smart data is available to crystal disk info no matter what mode is set. So you can still have a mirror or RAID 0 and it shows you all the smart data of both drives individually. The things I didn't like is you get almost no additional info about what's going on in the RAID array. So for example, if you set up a mirror, you can pull a drive and it just keeps working without any issues. But other than a little red LED, I have no information about it. I don't know if the RAID rebuild is finished if I put a new drive in. I don't know how the array is going. There's no real software to monitor it. And I just, I can't put that much trust in a system that I don't really know how it's going. I, I'm just not a fan of these systems. The fortunate part is a lot of RAID software these days works fine with these external drives. So for example, storage spaces in Windows, ZFS in Linux, and MDADM. And I often prefer these much more than these kind of little RAID controllers I'm not sure what's going on with. The one thing I do kind of like with USB RAID controllers though, is I can put one big file system on the box and make it so I can mount it on like a Mac and a PC because typically software RAID is not compatible between different OSs. But since it only supports two drives, that use case can't really be used here. So I really don't see what the use case of this RAID built in is. And performance wise, because these are off the shelf USB to SATA and USB to NVMe chips, I get about the performance I'd expect out of those converters. And here are some Crystal Disk Mark screenshots if you want to take a look at about the performance you can expect for an NVMe or a SATA hard drive on this system. But basically a SATA hard drive will be maxed out in the system without any issues. And a NVMe or a SATA SSD is going to be limited by the USB bus if you're pushing against that limit. Now let's get into some of my final thoughts after using this unit for a little bit. If you want a box that connects four M.2 NVMe drives and four three and a half inch mechanical hard drives to the system over USB, this system does essentially exactly that with no major issues. And it could be a convenient way to connect spare drives you have to a desktop system or get a little mini PC or Raspberry Pi and make a nice little NAS out of this system and not be tied to the internal infrastructure built into a NAS unit like this and still have fairly low power consumption considering these little PCs pull less than 10 watts from the wall. But the one thing that I did think was a little bit odd was just when does this drive configuration make sense? At least to me, if I'm doing NAS duties, I'm probably still running only hard drives because hard drives are much cheaper. But with the four NVMe drive bays, I'd probably only get this unit if I was actually going to use these drive bays. Which, while nice to have, the USB port is still fairly limiting in terms of speed compared to other platforms. Could be nice if you already have these drives laying around, or maybe you don't need to take full advantage of these drive speed for your use case, but it still seemed like a bit of a weird configuration to me. Um, in my thoughts. Let me know in the comments below if you had a good idea of where something like this drive configuration over USB makes a lot of sense. The other thing is when working with this device, I had a few oddities and just annoyance and quirks that I wasn't the biggest fan of. For example, the weird RAID configuration of only two drives just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Having no M.2 status LEDs is just a little annoying. Not being able to put in different sized M.2 drives other than 2280 is not optimal. I feel like you could have put those screws in fairly easily. No trim support's pretty annoying and gonna limit write performance on a lot of SSDs a good amount. And also I think the labeling on some of these devices are relatively poor. So for example, the screws you have to take off to take off the top cover aren't labeled differently than the screws to take apart the rest of the unit, which a user would likely have no reason to do so. And this is a early sample unit that hasn't gone on public sale yet. So some of this might be fixed and I'll post a pinned comment below if those issues have been fixed in later revisions of this model. 
And hopefully they are, because I think some of these are relatively easy to fix issues, in my opinion. Let me know what your thoughts on a device like this are in the comments below. And if you think a drive configuration like this over USB would make sense for your use case. Thanks for watching.